I'm Jennifer Snez, you're watching News 24 Live. I'm joined in studio by DJ and producer Dean Fuel, who is playing at the Shimmy Beach Club in Cape Town tomorrow night with Show Tech. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Uh, surviving the heat today, but uh, can't complain. Well, I was just telling you that we don't experience the heat because we're locked up in here the whole day. Yes. Almost being held hostage, but at least we don't get hot. At least there's air conditioning. Yes, exactly. That's good. <laughs> now, you're playing the Shimmy Beach Club tomorrow. Correct. Yes. Show Tech is going to be there. Correct. Have yes. you met them before, played with them before? Uh, no, it's going to be my first time mm -hmm. both meeting them and playing with them. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I'm aware, they were due to be on part of the lineup for the Ultra Festival this yeah. year. And due to like an, a booking conflict conflicting booking they couldn't make it so the promoters from electric music decided to bring them for their own mm -hmm. separate tour so it's going to be at shimmy on friday night and then up to joburg for the h2o party on saturday That's we'll exciting. be playing with them as well so it makes for a great tour and it's it's a nice sort of time of year for the tour because it's not peak summer all the outside you'd be hot surprised for thinking <laughs> that it is uh, but it's a nice way to kind of end the summer season with mm -hmm. the, with the big show how do you prepare for these big shows uh, mostly just try to get as much new music as I can. Mm -hmm. um, I always think it's a great opportunity to play great new music to the dance floor. Uh, people come with an open mind, they they up for a good night out and up for a party. So uh, rather than sticking to sort of old favorites, I'd rather try to find new music and impress people with that. And then also just kind of I look where I'm playing in the set. Is it an opening set? Is it mm -hmm. a closing set? And then kind of figure out what will be the best sort of style or vibe for the set. But at the end of the day, every time you get up and you play into the crowd, for me, I never pre-plan what I'm going to play. You don't? No. Ever? Never, never, never. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll have like uh, new tracks, I'll have my entire collection with me. But the main thing is to feed off the crowd, to get, take cues from their energy. What are they enjoying? What aren't they enjoying? What's going to work? Mm -hmm. And the spontaneity, I think, is what makes DJing so great. Is it, it's what makes it very exciting and very fun. I would so. never be able to DJ. I often look at DJs like, how are they doing that? You're yeah. like music magicians. Uh, <laughs> I think that's giving us a little too much credit, um, but certainly we, we've got to know our music. We've got to yeah. uh, be able to pick up the, the energy and the vibe from the crowd and be able to communicate it with them. And I think if you can get that balance right, then you can have a great set. How did you get into DJing? Uh, it's pretty much been in my blood since I was born. Uh, grew up in a family... Came out with the turntables. Uh, with the headphones, pretty <laughs> much. Um, but actually, my parents have been in the music industry their whole lives. Mm. And so I grew up around music. Uh, grew up with a father that did tours and shows. He played in a band when he was younger. And so I was always exposed to music. And through it, I learned different instruments. I learned the piano, I learned the guitar. Started like a, a rock band with my buddies when we were in high school. But Do you miss that rock band? No, we were terrible, <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I just I remember going to the early raves and mm -hmm. uh, going clubbing and you know hearing great music from people like Daft Punk and Chemical Brothers, and that just blew my mind. So I was always attracted to electronic music, and you know I'd go to these raves and I'd go to the clubs and I'd always be interested in what the DJ was doing, mm -hmm. how they were controlling the sound, how they were controlling the dance floor. And I just figured that was something that I wanted to try. Uh, and I ended up buying myself two turntables when I was at Varsity. Picked up DJing pretty much as just a hobby. And then by the time I finished studying, I you know, put myself out there enough to be playing regular gigs. And mm -hmm. in a gap year, I thought, let me just give it a go. Let me see where this can lead. And 15 years later, I'm still DJing. Do you still use turntables? Sadly not. Uh, Never, I'm, ever. You don't just whip them open sometimes. And it's, it's, it's a tricky thing, you know, mm -hmm. just access to music on vinyl is so difficult yeah. to come by, especially being based in South Africa. And, you know, a lot of the nightclubs stopped looking after their turntables. So even if I would rock up to play a set on vinyl, the, the equipment wouldn't work. Yeah. So more and more we had to move on to things like CDs, then USBs. And these days my whole setup is run around a laptop setup. Uh, which means that I can control it. It's um, software driven, but then you control it through mixes and hardware. Mm -hmm. So it, it keeps you busy. There's a lot that you can do. But there's definitely a part of me that misses the old days of playing on vinyl and playing on turntables. It was, it was a good time. I think any DJ who started off on turntables misses that whole Yeah, experience. there'll always be a nostalgia for it. Yeah. And there's a lot of people out there that believe that you're not r a real DJ if you can't actually mix on vinyl. It's almost a rite of passage, you know? So. Mm. I mean, Do you believe that? Um, <laughs> I think that what the rite of passage should be that you should learn 
the basic mechanics of mixing mm -hmm. before letting the software do it for you. Because these days okay. the software is so advanced, you can literally push a button and it can automatically mix stuff for you. And I think a lot of the starting art DJs rely on this too much and instantly think that they're a great DJ because everything's mm -hmm. in time. Meanwhile, that was something that would take you a year or two years to actually learn and how to perfect that before you even play to a crowd. You yeah. know? So I think it's just um, the respect for how difficult it used to be to put music together um, should still be something that young DJs that are starting out learn to do. Because um, once you've got that right, then the rest you can really concentrate on planning the set, planning what tracks you're going to play and how you mix it.